Okay, hello everybody. Um, my name is Michelle Reitler and I'm the science teacher for IDEA. And I wanted to introduce you to a new option with 7th and 8th grade science. And this is brand new. Uh, I've been designing it for quite a while now. And uh, it's something that I really hope that you're willing to try out. Well, today we're going to talk about the 7th and 8th grade programs, but I'm going to use the 7th grade just as an example. And uh, you're going to sign up for Moodle. Now, with the 7th grade Moodle, you can choose to go through the orientation at this point or not. If this is the only class that you're taking with Moodle, then you don't have to sign up for a, an orientation. But the beauty of the 7th grade program is that um, it's going to be completely teacher graded. The parent teacher will be there to help their child understand the material. Um, they'll also be there to uh, guide the child in finding the right answers, but you don't have to deal with monthly progress updates and you don't have to deal with portfolio conferences because of the way the program is designed. So in Moodle, here's what the class looks like and you can see that I have a pacing guide here and you just click on the pacing guide. It's a PDF document and it's going to come right up and you can print this out by clicking on the print button or you can save a copy to your computer right here but it's the pacing and due dates and you can see that it's alternately colored by week so that you know how many sections each week now one of the things that you need to know is that if you choose to do this program and i hope that you do um, the due dates for the worksheet questions right here those are firm there's no wiggle room on them uh, because the qu they're technically listed as quizzes in Moodle even though they're not graded as quizzes. Um, but that's what the module is called and it has a specific close date and I can't go back and reopen them for you. So um, these questions, these worksheet questions are no more than 9 or 10. They're pretty simple and I'll show you where they come from. But you can see that most of the time you're doing a worksheet, but also once a quarter, you're also doing a portfolio assignment. Now, if the portfolio assignment is a large one, and you can see that this one is not because there's also a reading section that week. But if the portfolio assignment is a large one, then you get multiple weeks to work on it. So you can see here you've got a whole week where you're just doing nothing but working on it and then the final project is due at the end of the following week so you have two full weeks to work on it um, because it takes a little bit more time to do that one and um, I'll show you where that comes from and where the instructions are etc so if you take a look there's a class information and resources toggle when you click on the little triangle it opens it up you can see here's the syllabus. It's the same syllabus as you find in uh, the IDEA website, so it looks exactly the same. When we go back, though, and you take a look at the course resources, there's one section you're going to be looking at a lot, and that is this folder right here, the online textbook chapters. And here's, uh, you get two options. You have EPUB folders and you have PDF folders. Now the EPUB folders are good for iPads, iPods, Nooks, and Android devices. So if you have any of those things, you can use the EPUB files for them. And there's an instructional tutorial right here. It says, how do I add EPUB to my device? And I go, I go through step by step on how to do that for each one, each one of those types of devices iPads and iPods are the same, so you just use the, the iPad instructions. Now the advantage of EPUB, if you can get it, versus PDF, is that sometimes these chapters have videos in them, where it's additional content out on YouTube that will help um, your student understand the program a little bit better. So I highly recommend that if you can get onto um, the EPUB folders, totally do it, because you'll get a lot more out of the experience. The PDFs have exactly the same information, it's just that the videos are static. Um, and so I'm going to show you what that looks like. So here's chapter 15. And if you take a look, um, it's got your goals and objectives, your main vocabulary that you're going to cover, 
and then it has your introduction and it starts going into the information and you can see it's very rich in information there's not a lot of um, floofy stuff it's very much kind of need to knows so it gives you some examples and um, goes through different kinds of energy flow in ecosystems which is what this is talking about and then you have food chains food webs um, we can see that's a food chain and that's a food web so you can see that they're a lot different um, as far as the complexity and the interrelationships then we talk a little more on energy and then there's a summary now here's the review questions if you take a look at the review questions when you go into Moodle and I'll show you that so when you go into Moodle there is review questions let's just take a look at the first week it won't match up with these but what I have done is I have basically just taken the questions from the online textbook oh it's not letting me let me go back to the next one sorry I'd already opened that to take a look at okay here's 14.2 sorry about that so what I have done is I have taken just the questions from your textbook your online textbook and I've pasted them into Moodle that's it and the student will write out their answers in these boxes go to the next question and so on now one of the things that you'll need to understand is that most of the questions especially the recall questions those are all right in the book right above it okay but the applying concepts and the critical thinking will use the concepts you've learned in the material above but it won't always have um, the exact answer in the text so you have to use it's called higher order thinking skills so you have to use a higher order thinking skill in order to answer that question and it may be something as simple as think of your own example that that also does this so um, I looked at one that said it was asking about the symbiotic relationship between clownfish and anemones and it says great now you've learned about that one what's another symbiotic relationship and you could just think of other ones or maybe have heard about and just put them in there that's why these are open response questions because I have to look at each individual child's answers because each child thinks about the concepts a little bit differently and that's okay um, if I can tell what the child is thinking everything's groovy and cool um, and you know and generally I can if not I'll put when I grade it I put in a commentary question saying I don't quite understand can you clarify um, and things like that so each quiz so I'm gonna say next each quiz slash worksheet is graded um, I grade them on Mondays and Fridays so on Mondays and Fridays um, I, I grade them but they're not due until the Sunday uh, of each week so if you take a look here we start on February 4th and we go through the 10th which is that Sunday and so these two worksheets are due on the Sunday do I expect your child to be working over the weekend heck no I don't um, but if they do need to they have that option especially if you get through a busy week or a testing week and things like that um, and that's why I grade on Mondays and Fridays so Fridays will catch anything that you did during that week and then the the Monday will catch everything you did in the prior week and then we move on now there's never more than three sections per week so if you have a two section week I'd recommend getting uh, reading the section on Monday first section on Monday doing the worksheet on Tuesday and then section on Wednesday do the worksheet on Thursday then you're done for the week and if you're doing it on um, a three section week for example let's see this is a three section week in February 7, 11th through the 17th um, you know read the section and do the worksheet on Monday and then rest a day or you can read the next section and then do the worksheet on Wednesday and so on and you can see that it's it's an easy progression 
These are short sections. Um, when you look at it in the PDF form, they're never more than about three pages, and that's including all of the big pictures and stuff. Um, and so that's pretty manageable, easy to get done, regard, uh, you know, able to uh, assimilate that information um, in order to accomplish these three worksheets per week. You just have your science, your life science or your physical science hour set aside, and that's what they do. And um, reading three or four pages two or three times a week is not typically very um, difficult for the regular student or honor student or even struggling students to accomplish because it's all right there. Okie dokie. So that's the basic gist of it. When we get to portfolio projects, you can see this one is a quick portfolio assignment, so I don't even have a, a folder on it because it just says build a model of the water cycle with labels. They should include areas without human interference and areas that have human structures and show how the water cycle is impacted by these structures. Well, prior to that, we had just covered the water cycle. And so it relates to exactly what they just finished covering. And so it's a natural transition into it. And it's pretty, pretty simple. You can do this in Play-Doh. You can do it with, you know, toothpicks and labels if you wanted to. It's, um, there's so many ways to do it that I didn't want to restrict in each individual child in how they do it. Um, so they're going to, you know, basically send in pictures of it. And then the final one, <clears throat> let's find the final portfolio. Here it is. Okay, so the portfolio assignment for the second one is a lot more involved. And you can see that you're going to, they're going to create a Prezi or a PowerPoint on a disease because we cover human systems in second semester. So we'll cover, you know, the diseases and there's a lot of information on how it'll be graded, what the instructions are, and there's even, if they choose to do a PowerPoint, a template for, you know, basically plug in your stuff into that template. So I'm giving you a great deal of support for each portfolio um, as, as much as humanly possible that I can. If you have any questions, if you're choosing to, to go through this uh, program, and I really appreciate it if you do because your feedback is super important to me, but if you choose to go through the program and you get stuck somewhere or you don't quite understand a concept, in spring semester I have office hours every Wednesday and Thursday from 11 to 12 Mountain Time. And you just click on this and it takes you to the description and the link in a half a second because it's slow and it just lit, logs you in and then you just put in your name the email address now seventh and eighth graders typically don't have an email address so the it would you'll use the parents email address and then you say submit and if you've been on iLink before for any other iLinks your information is still in there and you don't have to worry about downloads or anything like that Okay, so that's the basics of the 7th and 8th grade programs. They look identical. They're organized by week, so you know exactly where you're going every week. Um, the pacing guide, again, is there for you to help keep you straight because it's all one page, and so it's easy to print and keep beside you. And you can see that I will be submitting the grades for your student. You don't have to deal with portfolio conferences for science, and you don't have to deal with grades for your student if you're in this program because I'll be submitting them each month to your contact teacher. So I hope that you have um, decided that you would like to try this program out. I'm really excited about it. And if you have any questions, by all means, please email me, Michelle Reitler at IdahoIdea.org. You can find me on the contact page uh, of the website or uh, give me a call. I work from 8 to 12 Mountain Time on Mondays through Fridays, and my number is 208-589-9877. Thanks, and have a great day.